Welcome back to Sports by GSMC Podcast Network. I'm your host, Jeremy Lapidus. If you are just tuning in, we just finished talking about Jim Harbaugh and the Michigan Wolverines getting their first round of punishments from the NCAA, this one having to do with recruiting violations uh, during the COVID restrictions where Jim Harbaugh met with a few families from recruits, showed them the facility in a time where you weren't allowed to do in-person meetings. Excuse me. Earlier on, we talked about Lori Markkinen getting the biggest extension in Utah Jazz history, a five-year, $238 million deal. Uh, massive contract for him. He does not get traded to the to the Warriors. It's going to be at least one year with the Jazz as he has a modified no-trade clause where he can't get traded until February 6th, which is past the NBA trade deadline this season. Uh, now, uh, we also covered in our first segment some updates from stories we covered earlier on in the week, including the White Sox breaking their 21-game losing streak, winning 5-1 to against the Oakland Athletics, as well as the Brandon Ayuk updates as the New England Patriots, which we'll talk about in just a second, are dropping out of the sweepstakes to go and get uh, the young, talented wide receiver. In this segment, like I uh, alluded to just a second ago, we're talking about those New England Patriots. We're continuing our series of covering every single NFL team. Starting, uh, we finished up the AFC. We finished up the NFC. We're almost. We're finishing up the AFC East today, so we'll get a full AFC East picture at the end of our show. We're going to start off doing an off-season review for the Patriots. Go over their draft, go over their signings, go over everything they lost, everything they gained, and give them a grade for it. But before we do that, remember, if you would like to be an even bigger part of the show than you already are, all you need to do is go to gsmcpodcast.net. Or if you are on YouTube on the GSMC Sports channel, all you need to do is hit that Super Chat button. If you do either of those things, a message should pop up on the bottom of the screen for you, me, and everybody else around the world to see. If you do have a burning question about sports, anything at all that you would like to ask, go and throw it in the chat. Throw it, throw it in the comments. I will get to it as soon as I possibly can. I appreciate everybody so much for sticking around, talking some sports with me here on a beautiful Wednesday afternoon. But like I was saying, we are going to get into the New England Patriots. New England Patriots off season to start here. The Patriots have had a have had an interesting off season, right? And obviously the big story with the Patriots is they kind of hit the reset button more than they already had before. You know, it's hard to fully hit the reset button if you're already the third worst team in football. But they hit the reset button. They let go of legendary head coach Bill Belichick. Bill Belichick, who ran the show for more than 24 years. He's been there forever. He's been there since before I was born. Uh, so this is the first football season I will ever experience without Bill Belichick coaching a football team, which is kind of insane to say. Bill Belichick was a legend, and his def well, while he did at the end kind of struggle without an offense that had anything, any juice at all, his defense was still elite. You can you can say whatever you want about Bill Belichick as a head coach, as a GM, about how he kind of failed a little bit down the, down the road being not great at drafting, and he never really was the greatest drafter, but you can't say anything about his defense. He's one of the greatest defensive coaches in the history of football, even with a bunch of nobodies, you know? Their biggest name on defense, probably Matthew Judon, was gone all of last season due to injury, you know, and they still had the ninth best defense in football by DVOA. That is not an easy thing to do on a, I, I won't say, uh, on what I will call a starless football team. Now, that is not to say that there aren't great players on that defense, because you can't, regardless of the scheme, you know, you can't have a great defense without good players, right? Bill Belichick elevates all of them. And that is why he is one of the best, if not the best, defensive coach in the history of football. He is that special. Now, they replace him with Gerard Mayo. Gerard Mayo, who was a linebacker for the Patriots for eight seasons, uh, you know, is was always going to be the successor, it seemed like, to Bill Belichick. Although for a long time it felt like Josh McDaniels was going to be that guy. Uh, but after two failed experiments as a head coach and a, almost a third one uh, as he agreed to a contract with Indianapolis and 
turned around that whole saga. This is not about Josh McDaniels. Uh, it became pretty clear it was always going to be Gerard Mayo. Gerard Mayo, you know, it's not like it's a complete departure from the culture, the Patriot way, but it is a new fit face and fresh ideas. Getting the old stale air out, I guess. And again, that, that's kind of rude to Bill Belichick. Bill Belichick, like I said, was still doing what he does best at the highest level last season. So it's not like he was uh it's not like he was bad, ever was a bad coach. He just needed a uh, offensive guy and he needed a quarterback like Tom Brady to power the offense. And they just they didn't have it. They had no weapons. And Mac Jones, for whatever reason, fell off a cliff after his rookie season. Uh but he's gone now as well. And what they've done is they've started fresh. Clean slate. New coach. New GM. New quarterback. They draft Drake May. Third overall. A pick that had a lot of people, uh, that had a lot of teams wanting to trade up for. We saw on Hard Knocks, the Giants, willing to give a lot for Drake May. We saw teams, we saw a couple of other teams trying to trade up for that third overall pick. The Patriots sit Sit Pat, take Drake May, third overall, in what they're hoping is the future of their franchise. Now, Drake May is a guy that, when, at the beginning of the draft cycle, I was very low on. I watched some more film. I got a little higher on him. Now, uh, now he wasn't ever my favorite guy. He's coming into training camp, but there's going to be growing pains, right? He's a gunslinger. That's that's not necessarily a bad thing. There's plenty of gunslingers. Josh Allen is an example of a gunslinger. Uh, Brett Favre, gunslinger. These guys, they they get into some trouble with interceptions, but they're still great players. Now, I'm not giving Drake May comps to those guys. I think he's a different player than both uh, uh, Josh Allen and Brett Favre, but there is potential there. Now, there are... Uh, rumblings out of camp that it's not really going great. And again, growing pains heading into the NFL, an elite defensive unit. It's not necessarily going to be an easy change that you can make, a change that you can just go like, boom, and I am back. I'm 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 the best player on this team, right? But if he but but they don't need him to be CJ Stroud, right? It'd be great if he was CJ Stroud. I'm sure every team that drafted a quarterback is like, all right, if you're CJ Stroud, we'll be so happy. But no one is expecting him to have that C.J. Stroud, uh, you know, Andrew Luck rookie type season, right? No one is expecting that out of these guys. Maybe Caleb Williams has that expect expectation thrown on him, but that is unfair to put on him. You don't get that kind of rookie season production just out of anywhere, especially in New England, where now that they're officially out of that Brandon Ayuk sweepstakes, they did a good job of trying to shore up that skill position. You know, they still have Ramondre Stevenson at running back, who I really like as as a as a workhorse back. They brought in KJ Osborne, who with the Vikings was one of my favorite underrated receivers. I really like what he can do. He's a shifty player. He's great with the ball in his hands in open space. And I think he can work really well in that offense. They have a nice speed guy in Demario Douglas uh that, you know, while he didn't score a touchdown last season and was hurt showed a lot of potential in flashes. They have Kendrick Bourne, who I'm a big Kendrick Bourne fan uh, from his days in the for with the 49ers. Again, not big enough to say he's a wide receiver, bona fide wide receiver one, but this is a wide receiver room that has some upside to it, right? You also add in the the draft pick of Jalen Polk. Uh, this is this is this is a this is not the worst unit in football. You know, they all have some solid tight ends. Uh, in Hunter Henry, and uh, <clears throat> they they have some t in, in Hunter Henry a, as well. This is this is this is a good team. The offensive line needs some work. The defense. I'm curious if it's going to take a step forward or step back. They didn't make too many gr huge additions defensively, but they are losing the defensive mind of you know one of the greatest defensive minds in the history of football. That is not an easy thing to just come in and say, "Oh, psh, we'll be fine." It's just Bill Belichick that we're losing. I'm curious to see how far, if at all, the defense falls because Gerard Mayo is just a chip off the old block. He's just a limb of the Belichick tree, and there hasn't really been too many successful Belichick tree guys that came out of New England. So I'm curious if this is going to be something that can flourish or if this is something that you just got to chop off soon. And a successful season for the Patriots is going to look more like 
just promise, right? There's not a lot in New England to sit here and say, oh, I expect them to win the division. This is a tough division. They have Aaron Rodgers and the Jets. They have Tua and the Dolphins. They have Josh Allen and the Bills. These are three great teams that are in their division, right? No matter how you slice it, the Patriots, I think, are on just a completely lower level than all three of the, those teams. Now, are all three of those teams on the same level? Similar, probably not, but they're all similar. The Patriots are not on the same step as them, though, and they need to understand that. these The Patriots can't come into this season and expect to compete for the division. They also can't come into the season and expect to compete for a wild card spot because of how deep this AFC is. This is a really, really deep AFC. They just need to show some promise, and if promise is all that shows and they still end up being one of the worst teams in the league, that's fine. You just don't want to come out there and come away with a season like the Panthers just did with Bryce Young, right? You want to sit there and be, hey, there's some promise here. Bryce Young, I still believe in him, but he has to prove it this season, otherwise it's done. Drake May, we don't know if he's going to play. It's a true quarterback competition between him, uh, Joe Milton, and uh, Jacoby Brissett. It seems like Jacoby Brissett has the lead right now. I don't expect him to start all 17 games this season, but they need to see something out of Drake May, out of Gerard Mayo, in order to say, yes, we made the right choice. Yes, we'd like to continue down this path. That is what a successful season looks like for the Patriots. Buckle in, New England fans. It's not going to be a great season. And, you know, anything can happen in football. I could be dead wrong here. But this is this is uh this doesn't feel like a great season. The uh the odds makers at Vegas have you as the worst team in the league at five and a half uh, as your over under for wins. We're gonna take a quick break here. When we come back, we're gonna see if I have you guys over or under that five and a half mark. We're gonna go through the entire New England schedule uh, real quick. Forgot to give them a grade. They're getting a they're getting they're getting a solid C. They didn't do too much, but they couldn't do too much because they aren't a draw right now. They, they've they got guys that I think could be really good or could be complete busts. So we'll see how they develop after this season. That is a C that could either turn into an F or an A uh, five years from now. That That's how volatile this offseason is for the Patriots. But anyway, we're going to take a quick break, come back, go over their schedule game by game, and give them a record prediction. So stick around for that. We'll be right back here on Sports by GSMC Podcast Network. Welcome back to Sports by GSMC Podcast Network. I'm your host, Jeremy Lapidus. If you are just tuning in, we just finished talking all about the Patriots offseason. The big addition slash loss, you will say, is at the quarterback and head coach areas with Bill Belichick out, Gerard Mayo in, excuse me, and the third overall pick of the draft, the shining future of the Patriots organization, Drake May. We'll see how that goes. I gave them a C. We talked about Brandon Ayuk, how the Patriots are out on him uh, for probably reasons of Ayuk saying no, if I'm being honest with you as well as the White Sox winning their first game in 27 days, the first time in 21 games that they win, uh, finally breaking that streak, uh, as well as Lurie Markin and signing a massive extension, and uh, Jim Harbaugh getting a slap on the wrist. Really, Michigan starting to go through the ringer for everything Jim Harbaugh did when he was with the Wolverines. Uh, in this segment, we're finishing up our coverage of the New England Patriots. We're taking a look at their schedule, going game by game, taking a look at everything that they have this season, seeing if they can get over or under that five and a half win total that is being put out there by Vegas. Uh, but before we do, remember, if you would like to be an even bigger part of the show than you already are, all you need to do is go to gsmcpodcast.net. Leave a tip or donation with a message in it. That message should pop up on the bottom of the screen for you, me, and everybody else around the world to see. If you are on YouTube, instead, on the GSMC Sports Network, all you all you have to do, you there should be a super chat button on the bottom of this live stream. Go and do that. Same thing, a message should pop up. I appreciate anything you guys do give. If you have a burning question about sports or anything at all, go and throw that in the comments. Throw it in the chat. I will get to it as soon as I possibly can. I appreciate everybody so much for tuning in, talking some sports with me here on a beautiful Wednesday afternoon. But like I was saying, we are going to finish off our show today talking about the New England Patriots season preview. We have a 
kind of a tougher schedule than a lot of other teams in this division, especially at the beginning of it. They have a lot of really talented teams to start off their season. It does get a little bit easier down the stretch, uh, kind of the opposite of the Dolphins' schedule here. They have a Week 14 bye, which for a team that's contending or a team that's trying to get a wild card spot, I think is tough. Now, if they're in a good position at that Week 14 bye, they're nice and rested for the playoffs. If they're in that position, that's a good spot, but it's a little late in the season for me. Again, not the toughest schedule, but we'll go through, see what kind of record we give them. Um, like I said, not an easy schedule. The win total for them is set at five and a half by Vegas, and they start off uh, a road game, a tough road game against the newly healthy Joe Burrow and the Bengals, and that that's not going to start off well. I don't think Drake May is starting week one. Uh, we do, we're probably going to have Jacoby Brissett starting that game. Uh, but the Bengals, I have winning this game starting off the season 0 and 1. Then the next game is at home against the Seahawks. And again, I don't think we see Drake May probably until around week six or week seven, if I'm being completely honest with you. But Jacoby Brissett is a solid backup quarterback. I still don't think that this Patriots team is going to be enough. Uh, I think they lose to the Seahawks here, fall to 0-2. Week 3 against the Jets on the road. Aaron Rodgers and the Jets are here. They'll they'll be better than the Patriots, just to put it bluntly. Like I said, they're kind of on a tier above them for now. They fall to 0 and 3, and it doesn't get any easier for the rest of, for, for the next couple weeks. They take on the Jets in week three, the Niners on the road in week four, the Dolphins at home, the Texans at home as well, and then they go on the road to take on the Jaguars. This is not an easy beginning of this schedule. So after the Jets, they take on those 49ers, and that's not going to go well either. I hate to break it to you, but the 49ers take care of business. The Patriots fall to 0-4 here. Then they get the Dolphins, and the Dolphins and the Patriots have an interesting relationship, right? The Dolphins are really good at losing to the Patriots when they are in Miami, but this one is in New England, and I'm giving this one to the Dolphins. The Patriots fall to 0-5 on this young season before going and taking on C.J. Stroud, the team, and the Texans, the team they hope to emulate this year, not going as well as I think they want it to. The Texans take care of business in Week 6. They fall into 0-6, and, and then they take on the Jaguars. On the road at the Jaguars, and again, I, I was going a little back and forth on this game, but I believe in this Jaguars team, and I don't really believe in this Patriots team. They fall to 0-7. A tough look at this point is where I actually would assume they make that quarterback switch, maybe even earlier, maybe around that Texans game. So from now on, we're looking at a team that has Drake May under center. And I think having that, uh, having that in their system... A home game against the Jets, they take care of business, get their first win. They improve to 1-7 and seven on the year. Then they go to Tennessee, take on the Tennessee Titans with Will Levis under center there. I think they win that game as well. Again, I think this defense is going to be good, and especially with a weak offensive line, I think teams might struggle a little bit with that. Uh, but the Titans lose in Week 9. They improve to 2-7 and seven on the year. Then they get Caleb Williams and the Bears. Battle of top quarterbacks from this draft. Uh, on the road, Caleb Williams and the Bears take care of business. They fall to 2-8. and eight. Week 11, Matthew Stafford and the Rams. I just think the Rams are better. The Rams win this game 2-9 and nine through 11 weeks on the season. Two weeks until the bye, they get the Dolphins and Colts before them. This is in Miami, and I talked a little bit about that before. Week 12 in Miami, I think the Dolphins, uh, you know, they're... The Dolphins at this point are actually undefeated in my rankings. I think the Patriots beat them, can't cancel their uh, their undefeated season as the as the Dolphins are kind of looking ahead to a brutal schedule from week 13 on. But the Dolphins here uh lose. The Patriots improve to 3 and 9 on the year. Then they host the Indianapolis Colts and I think this game could go either way, but I'm going to give the benefit of the doubt here to the Patriots. I don't think they're going to be the worst. I don't think they're going to be the worst team in football. So we're going to give them the benefit of the doubt here. Uh in week 13 
had winning two straight games heading into the bye at four and nine. Again, basically out of playoff contention at this point. They've got a couple weeks left in the season. They still have to take on the Bills twice, and then they get the Cardinals and the Chargers in between those. So it's a uh, excuse me. It's not it's not a super tough schedule down the stretch after the bye, but. It's not the easiest. The Cardinals, Kyler Murray, I think, is going to run circles around them. Uh, I think Kyler Murray is a is, is is just a mismatch for this Patriots team. The Cardinals win this game uh, at, in Glendale. Here they fall to to four and ten. Week sixteen on the road against the Bills. Josh Allen and the Bills need this to get into playoff contention. They need to win all of these games down the stretch to make the playoffs. Uh, they are fired up in this one and I think they beat the Patriots here. The Patriots fall to 4 and 11. Then they take on the Chargers. Jim Harbaugh and the Chargers. We talked about Jim Harbaugh a lot earlier on in our show. I'm giving the Chargers a loss here as the as the Patriots uh, improve to 5 and 11 heading into their final game of the season a division game taking on the Bills and again the Bills need this to make the playoffs they might not even make the playoffs if they do win but the Bills are going to win this game Josh Allen is just too good for this team the Patriots fall to 5 and 12 on the year they are missing the playoffs now I do think that this is a season to be expected I don't think people should expect out of the Patriots a great season. And I don't think people are expecting a great season out of the Patriots, to be completely honest with you. And that's probably a good thing to temper the expectations. They are, as I said, Vegas's favorite to be the worst team in football. And maybe that's a good thing. Maybe it is. This is a Patriots team that needed a deep reset, and they might have gotten it with Drake May. Now, I will be honest with you, I was way off on the Texans last season. I didn't think they'd make that jump. I had the Texans. I don't remember what I had them going, but I think I had them winning like six games. They end up winning 10. C.J. Stroud becomes this great quarterback out of nowhere. So maybe I'm completely wrong about the about this Patriots team. But let me know what you think about what the Patriots are going to do this season. I would love to hear your thoughts on it. I have them going 5-12. and 12. Again, this is, a, this is not a season that really matters. Honestly, they could lose every single game. This is, and all that would tell them is, okay, this is not the direction to go in. Uh, this, this, is a, this is a season for the Patriots that only matters as far as trying to figure out a path to go on down the future, right? This is, this is a season that, the record record wise does not really matter to be completely honest with you so i've been going five and 12 probably ending up with a higher draft pick in the nfl draft but uh we'll see what happens let me know what you think again thank you everybody so much for tuning in to today's episode of sports by gsmc podcast network i've been your host jeremy lapidus we'll be back here same time same place talking about all of the uh major news around sports uh, sorry, excuse me, before we go, we did finish the AFC East. I totally forgot to, to give you guys that. We'll go over the AFC East standings right here. Now we have all four teams predicted out fully. In fourth place, we have the New England Patriots that we have gone over here. They go 5-12, and 12, miss out on the season, in on the playoffs. In third place, we have the Josh Allen and the Buffalo Bills. Josh Allen and the Buffalo Bills go, fall to 9-8 and eight after winning 11 games last season. I just don't love what they did this offseason. They miss the playoffs for the first time in six years. Uh, now, we have a tie at the top of the division. Both the Dolphins and the Jets I have at 11-6. and six. They're both going to make the playoffs, but I'm giving the division win to the New York Jets because of tiebreakers. I do have the Dolphins losing both games in their season series to the New England to excuse me to the New York Jets and because of that the Jets have the tiebreaker and go on to win the division but yeah that's the AFC East for you we'll do a uh, a Super Bowl thing once we finish up with the AFC we'll do a full playoffs then but anyway thank you everybody so much for watching uh, today's episode of Sports by GSMC Podcast Network. I've been your host, Jeremy Lapidus. I appreciate all of you guys for sticking around, tuning in, and listening to the episode today. Again, you can leave a chat or anything in the future episodes on YouTube. Uh, we'll give you shout-outs there. We'll see you tomorrow for all the breaking news around the world of sports. Maybe we get some Brandon Ayuk news by tomorrow. But anyway, I'll see you same time, same place tomorrow. Have a good one. Bye-bye.
Let's go.